Sonic Wall just complete the hardware refresh of the entire TZ line with the introduction of the TZ270, 370 and 470. So we'll be looking at those firewall on every single angle, talk about datasheet, licensing and sizing and also be setting up this firewall using nothing else than my phone. So make sure you stick around until the end as I'll be using electrical tape, I'll play drum and I'll use a crowbar. Hi, I'm Jean-Pierre Talbot, SC for SonicWall in Canada, helping customer and reseller get the most out of their network security solutions. If you're new here, please make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. And all the links to the content I'll mention will be in the description box down below. So let's get started. With the release of the new TZ270, 370 and 470, including the 570 and 670 that got released maybe a month ago, that completes the hardware refresh for the TZ line. As a Sonic Wall SC, I'm lucky enough to get a box that showed up on my doorstep. So let's open it up and see what we've got. So welcome to my very first unboxing video. So I want to point out here on the cardboard box that we do have a zero touch ready tag. So if you want to know more about zero touch, I've put a link in the description box down below on a video I've done on NSM where I actually talk and demo zero touch in action. So here we do have paperwork, very important to read them before going to sleep. So here we do have our Firewall, as you can see, it is a TZ470 wireless. We do have the usual suspect LEDs in front about the power, the wrench, uh, the wireless, and this one has 10 ports. And it can see in the back, eight of those ports are one gig copper and two are SFPs. And we do have cables here. I do love those little um, network cable, they're uh, unshield flat pair instead of unshield twisted pairs. And we do have the two wireless antennas. So pretty easy, just like any wireless antenna, just screw them in place. Important point here, just like pretty much every single thing that has antennas for Wi-Fi, please put the antenna straight up. Sometimes I see people putting them at 45 degrees or trying to do some weird angles. It is not going to help you performance wise. So you need to put them straight like I did here. Well, like I almost did here. The left one is a bit uh, at an angle, but uh, yeah, the right one is pretty good. So that concludes the unboxing video. The TZ270, 370 and 470 share the exact same metal casing. So that means we don't have plastic sews anymore. All three models have eight one gig ports, which is quite a jump for the users out there running a SO250 or a TZ350. The TZ470 on top of the eight one gig port also have two SFP ports that can do 2.5 gig. I wish I'd receive a TZ270 or 370 to be able to show you the port layout, but I didn't get one. So please allow me to use my worldwide well-known Photoshop skills and I'll show you the port layout of the TZ270 and 370. Here you go. That's exactly how the port layout is going to look on the TZ270 and 370. Power, eight ports, and a console cable. The TZ5 and 670 share the same metal casing, which is slightly bigger than the TZ2, 3, and 470. As the TZ470, the 5 and the 670 have eight one gig port as well as two SFPs. The difference is that the 570 SFPs can do five gig, where the 670, I believe, is the first one on the market to have 10 gig ports on it. Something else that differentiate the 5 and the 670 is the dual power supply. When you buy the unit, there is one power adapter that comes with it. If you want to use a second one, you just need to buy it separately. Unfortunately, you cannot take the power adapter of your TZ600, it's not gonna fit on a 670. For those that prefer a table to better understand, here it is. As you can see, all the TZ have eight one gig ports. Starting the TZ470, they have two SFPs and you get their speed here. 
the TZ2, 3 and 470 have single power supply and 570, 670 have dual power supply. Important point to mention, all non-wireless firewall are fanless. And as you can see, all models are available with wireless, except the TZ670, which is not a change. The TZ600 didn't add wireless as well. Talking Wi-Fi. I'm sure you know, the old wireless TZ have three antennas. And here is a new one. It has two antennas. And if you put them side by side, you'll notice the antenna are much shorter. So legit question you may have, do I get less worth of Wi-Fi? So I gave it a try. I only tested on five gigahertz and I haven't noticed any difference in, ter in term of range. Where I did notice a difference was the throughput. I first tested right next to the firewall with my iPhone and the speed test gave me the 300 meg internet line that I have. I'm sure I could get more out of their Wi-Fi, but my internet is 300, so that's what I got. Then I moved to the ground floor in my house. So here is the second floor. So I moved down to the ground floor and tested again with the old TZ 400 here. I was able to get 75 megabit out of the 300 I got. But with the new TZ, I got 150 twice as fast. So based on my little testing I did, I'm not going further, but when I'm in within range, I'm getting more throughput. And I bet this is thanks to AC Wave 2 on the new TZs versus AC Wave 1 on the old TZ. Personal recommendation here. If you need Wi-Fi for a few employees that need to connect on Wi-Fi once in a while, by all means, go with the TZ with wireless antennas. Works great. But if you do have a fair amount of employees that need to connect on Wi-Fi every single day, all day long, then I would strongly advise to go with one of our access point, simply because you can better position them. They have much more features and also they are dual radio. And I like this one because it's designed to be to replace a wall plate. See here, you simply punch the network cables in there. So it's great in the event where you are running out of network cables or it's just not possible to run a network cable in the middle. So what you can do is simply pull a printer out and find a network plate. So you just pull that plate off and then you simply punch the network cables behind that uh, access point and you just mount it back on the wall and connect the printer underneath so it works great next thing everybody wants to look at is the specs so here they are we will look at a few important numbers and that means we will skip the very first line which is firewall inspection throughput because this is the performance you will get out of your security device by turning every single services off which of course I don't personally recommend running a firewall in this mode. I usually recommend to turn every single services on. So if you do this, the performance you should get is with the threat prevention throughput. As you can see, the TZ270 can get you 750 megabit of throughput, which is quite a jump compared to the Soho 250 that could do 200 meg. And all the other TZ can get you over one gig of throughput with a whopping 2.5 gigabit of throughput for the TZ670. The second number I look at is DPI SSL. That is on pure HTTPS traffic where we tell the firewall to decrypt the HTTPS traffic, inspect that traffic with every single security services, and then re-encrypt that communication. So as you can see, you can still get a fair amount of throughput turning everything on, including HTTPS traffic. And now let's compare the old TZ with the new one. As you can see, it's a huge performance bump compared to the previous generation TZs. Everything seems to be at least three times the performance and some are even well over 10 times. And now let's compare with the competition. Many know me for over a decade. I don't like to bash on competitors. So I took the time to remove all manufacturers name and model. Each symbol is a firewall from the same vendor. Those are advertised performance with all security services enabled. All I wanted to show here is the trend. So everyone are in between those lines and Sonic Wall was pretty much right in the middle. And now if you look at the new TZ, the performance they able to achieve, we simply dominate the market right now. And now let's talk sizing. There is a lot of things that can influence the sizing. And here it's just my own personal opinion. I just base my sizing based on the amount of connection 
for DPI SSL. And I've put about 1500 to 2000 connections per user. So if you do the math, the TZ270 would be good for a 10 to 15 users, the 370, 15 to 20 users, the TZ470, 20, 30 users roughly, the 570 would be, go for a 30, 40 users, and the TZ670, I would go roughly 40 to 50 users. And if you don't plan on turning on DPI SSL and inspect HTTPS traffic, then I would strongly advise you look at my video on Capture Client. You'll find a link in the description box down below because it is crucial to turn on DPI SSL inspection simply because again, 90%, if not close to 100% of website nowadays are all HTTPS. So you need the firewall to decrypt all that traffic and apply all the inspections and all the security services you have. And licensing have changed with generation 7 of our firewall. We no longer have the AGSS and the CGSS. And now we do have threat protection, which is pretty much the same as your CGSS. And I would personally not recommend it simply because it does not have capture ATP, which is your ultimate weapon against ransomware. And then we do have the essential, which is pretty much the same as the AGSS. And we also have the advanced, that has everything that the essential has, plus it also has NSM. I would suggest you look at the video in my description box down below that I've done on NSM, and I talk also about zero touch deployment, reporting, and all the cool things that NSM can do. And next is to configure those firewall. I'm sure you configured plenty of TZs using your laptop, but I'm pretty sure you never configured one using nothing else but your phone. So to do this, pick the power, Figure it out where it goes. I'm not gonna help you on this. Then pick your phone and download the Sonic Express app. And once it's downloaded, just open it. Type in your username and password for my Sonic Wall. Then select which tenant you want to activate that new firewall. Then click at the small plus at the up upper uh, right and click connect by USB. Then you pick, in my case, your iPhone key, iPhone USB cable, plug it in there, connect this here, type in your password saying you trust this thing. And it's gonna say it detected the firewall. It's nice enough to nice enough to tell you what's the default username and password. So type in admin and type in the password, password by default. And then, click, and then click on login. What I like to do as well is when I work with my phone, you know, of course I'm working with my phone setting up the firewall, but I kind of like to pretend I'm not doing much. So I'll just lay back like this, put my feet up. And then, you know, do my things, right? So now it's authenticating to the firewall. It found the firewall, it's connected. So we have a guided wizard. So now it's doing product registration, product code sync and license sync. That will take a few minutes. So that gives you the opportunity to have some fun, right? You can just stay there, lay back and uh, appear you're just on Facebook doing not much. Someone shows up, he's like, hey, I'm just setting up a firewall, all good, uh, I'm working, see? You can do this, or you can push a bit further, like uh, playing drum. So you can be like, yep. If they show up again, it's just like, oh man, setting up a firewall is, that, that, this app rocks. Those new firewall are amazing. It's music to my ear. Or you can push further again. You can put it like this and uh, grab your headset. Just pretend you're watching some music or listening to com comedy, um, any comedy and just start laughing with no reason. And someone will be like, what's going on? Oh man, setting up those firewall with the phone, it's a real joke, it's so easy. You can do this. Or later on, you'll see, we'll get into the configuration of the firewall and you can even push further if you want, I'll show you. And now we can go into a setup guide. So let's hit setup guide. And there's a pretty neat feature that I strongly recommend using. It allows you to change the default password. So 
I would strongly advise you go ahead and type in password as the old password and type in any new password. So see here, that's where you can push a bit further. We have options we can turn on and off and later on there's even more configuration you can do. So it can be like uh, this, uh, nah. Uh, oh yes, and swipe the other way. And again, if the boss or someone shows up and he appear to be mad for some obvious unknown reason, you can just say, well, I'm sitting on the farm. Well, there's plenty of options. See, I can, ooh, I can turn that on. And that's it, problem solved. So you can just stay there, confirm your settings about the HTTP is enabled, the LAN interface IP, and confirm so your firmware is pretty much set. WAN is set, the LAN is set, licenses are in, change the default password, and next you can go into the firewall dashboard. So see, we can see CPUs, the model, serial number, what OS it runs. Um, there is plenty of options you can do. You can have a fair amount of information of how things are going with this firewall without even connecting to the network. That's pure USB. Of course, you need the data plan on the phone to do registration, of course, because it goes into uh, my sonic wall, right? Then you get into details. There is a lot more stuff like inter information about interfaces, the HTTP lease and everything. So see, I can go here into my zones and I can see all the security services and I can turn them on using my phone. So again, you can go, nah, nah. Ooh, yes. Mm, yes. Other ways to have a good time with your colleagues around. Okay, and then we're done setting up the firewall. So you can just unplug the USB and leave stuff over there. Unplug the power and ship the firewall or put it in your trunk or whatever it may be, right? So next is to talk about the Sonic OS 7. It is a totally new firmware, totally new OS. It's Linux, Linux based built from the ground up and I personally like it very much. There are menus that are that looks really nice and I feel things are very well placed. I mean, every time I'm looking for something, it is exactly where I expect it to be. It's easy to find. The UI also communicate much more about what's going on through the main dashboard. It tells you about your traffic, what people do, what app they use, and also tell you about what has been blocked. You can click and drill down on different things. I really love it. Important point to mention as well, if you want, you are able to migrate the configuration from your Gen 6 firewall into your, your Gen 7 firewall. But my personal recommendation is to simply redo the configuration. Not because the migration will not work. It works, it's supported, it's not a problem, but it's not every day you can have your production firewall in your hand for a week and no one will ever complain. Because if you take your Gen 6 firewall that is in production right, right now and you take it off, I guarantee you in within seconds people will, will complain and the first complaint will be of course that Facebook is not working and then they can get their email and then the phone is not working, right? So there is no way you can get a production firewall in your hand for more than five seconds without it being the end of the world. So if you have a brand new firewall, it's time to redo your config from scratch if you have time, of course, because it allows you to simply find the policies and things that you've set temporarily to do a test three years ago and they're still there, right? So if you redo your configuration, you'll be able to rethink what needs to be there and do I really need this? So it really forces you to truly go through everything and make sure you got everything set the way it should be. So thanks for watching. I hope you liked that video and see you in the next one. Thanks.